let's talk a little bit about Gareth Bale. Remember, live on TalkSport 2 tomorrow evening, we bring you uh, Wales' trip to Belgium in their first World Cup qualifier. It is a tough first match against the world's number one team. They will need their best player, Gareth Bale, uh, of Spurs right now on loan, of course, to be firing on all cylinders. But he's had a bit of a mixed season, hasn't he, at White Hart Lane so far? Um, He has shown some encouraging signs of late, getting a little bit of that fitness back, that freedom of movement. Well, today, Bale spoke to the media, talking about his plans after his loan in North London from Real Madrid ends. The main reason I obviously came to Spurs this year was, was obviously, I wanted to play football first and foremost, but going into Euros, I wanted to be match fit. So, um, yeah, the, the... the original plan was only to, to do a season at Spurs. And then, um, yeah, after the Euros, I still have a year left at Real Madrid. And, um, yeah, as, as far as my plan, obviously, is to go back. And, um, yeah, that's, that's as far as I've planned, to be honest. My plan's to go back. That is as far as I've planned, to be honest. So he's not necessarily saying he won't stay in North London, but he's certainly saying his plan right now is to go back to Real Madrid. And a player that's gone through what he's gone through in Spain, you might hear those mutterings. Always happens on international break, doesn't it? That that you might be thinking about a new challenge, I think, is the, the right thing to say when you're on international duty, right? None of that sort of noise from Gareth Bale. Is that just money, Anton? Do you, do you think he's not, you know, he's not closing the door on Real Madrid because he wants to go back and certainly see out that it's a very big contract? Um, potentially, um, as you said off air, um, it's probably it's probably the best he's spoken about Madrid. He ain't hammering Ma- uh, Madrid like mm. he has done before, mm. you know. So that could be saying that he's going back for to see out the rest of that com- that uh, contract and. Why not? It's on 500 grand a week, so to speak. <laughs> Why wouldn't you go back and see it out, you know? But, but um, he's, had a, he's had a torrid time, though. The fans have been on his back. Zinedine Zidane, he has not got along with, you know, their, their relationship has clearly been torrid at times, really. Zidane hasn't spoken too positively about him. It was clear at times he's wanted him to, to leave the club. Of course, he's out on loan at the moment. Um, but he's wanted him to leave permanently previous windows before he went to Tottenham Hotspur. If you're Gareth Bale, Leanne, would you want to go back to, to Madrid? No, I personally wouldn't. But I, I think as well, though, people have to remember it's only a loan deal. So I'm not quite sure what the expectations were when he signed. Because I think they obviously must have had a deal because it seems like today when he's come out and spoke, and he's been honest, which is great because you want to hear people being honest. But the time is a little bit unusual. But I think we've got players like Gareth Bale, people are going to talk about how much money they're on. The same as when people talk about how much money Harry Maguire got, like how much he cost. It's always mm. a focus of conversation. And I think, you know, I don't know what the conversations were at Spurs before he went back there, but I just think there needs to be, understand the expectations of Gareth Bale because has it been successful? I don't think so. I think he's had a couple of decent games. I love Gareth Bale. I think he's a brilliant player. Absolutely phenomenal player. But why do we always talk about, you know, is he fit enough? He can't play two. He has one game and then he can't play the next game. That's not what you spend all that money on. And, you know, you, we were talking about before, you can spend that money and get someone that can play every minute of every game, a top, top player. Because they split the wages, don't they? What, 220000 a week? Sounds like um, your wages. <laughs> <laughs> so they split it, you know. So that's still a lot of money, 220000 or whatever it is, each mm. club to play, pay. So I think, like I said, I'm a massive fan of Gareth Bale, but I think it's a little bit, the fragility sometimes I question with Gareth Bale because I think often at times when he's been on the bench, you can take a picture and, and you can, you know, show someone looking like they're disinterested, but that's maybe how he just is. That's just maybe him as a person. It doesn't mean because he's sitting there with his hood up or on his mask upside down. It doesn't mean he doesn't care, mm. but people are looking for, you know, something to focus on. He's a great player, but how do how do Spurs get the best out of him? He goes back to Madrid. He didn't seem happy there. He said he's happy at Spurs, but maybe the two clubs can't come to an agreement. Leanne talks, Anton, about expectation. Maybe from the Spurs fans' point of view, the expectation was the romance of this deal. You know, Gareth Bale was going to come back. He was going to play at least somewhere near what he was doing before he went off to Real Madrid and won all those European Cups at the, cl- the club, the new stadium. Harry Kane alongside you, Hyung Min Son, would be able to to convince you that you should be coming back on a, on a permanent deal. I think today, uh, you know, is, is going to hurt a little bit in terms of making that dream become a reality. Yeah, definitely. Um, My wife's family, they're all Spurs, you know, um, and I'm West Ham, so there's a conflict in the house. Um, But I just messaged my brother-in-law asking him what he thought, because he's a massive Spurs fan, and he said that, on his comments today, he said it's a a bit of a strange one. In a way, he's got to say that because Madrid are paying some of his wages, and he's on loan, and he has to go back. 
But as a Spurs fan, you don't want to really hear him saying he came to get fit for hours. Oh, well, that, that was the other. That was the other point. Mm. I mean, it, uh, you know. But maybe it's changed during that time. I, I, do you really think that he came back to England to get sp- fit for Wales, or maybe that's changed during the time of him being here? I think he we did. don't know. It's no, all I, up I, in I, the I, air. I, no, I think he did. But you really I think, think he yeah, came I think back? He did. Okay. Yeah, I think the reason that a player who's won four European Cups chose to go on loan to Tottenham Hotspur, with all due respect, is because you knew you were going to play. You, you wouldn't, yeah. you, you know. And that but he has, hasn't played though. No, as but, well. he, he, but he hasn't played he, because he of his own. But he had an expectation, I'm sure, that he was going. He looked at that team and went, "I'll play." He but surely if he's gone... fit enough, he would play, wouldn't he? He'd be one of the first names down on the team sheet. But that's well, on the... him to also get fit, in my opinion. I, Me personally, I think that they haven't... I don't think they've got him to his peak fitness in terms of... He might train and train every day or train every so often, or so, so to speak. But when you train, like we was talking before, you can do a full pre-season, feel unbelievable. But when you start playing in the Premier League in the elite, it's... You, you don't feel that fitness. You don't feel like a thoroughbred until maybe three, four games in, you know, and you need them constant games. He's not played consistently. And I think if you're paying that money and you know what he can actually do, you got to fit him in somewhere and he's got to play more consistently than he has done because you've got to warrant that. You've got to warrant them wages. Plus, you've got a hell of a player on your, on your hands and all. But look at the post-game interview he did the other week when he kept talking about his age. You know, and if that's me, I wouldn't be... Ronaldo doesn't mention his age. Gareth Bale's a top, top player. And he's often just... I think when he's in an interview, he's talking about, you know, I'm this age now. He's almost like his legs are going, no, they're not. I wouldn't be out there saying that because it makes it feeds into what people's trying to see. He's only 31. I mean, when you compare that... He's younger to, than me. <laughs> yeah, but when you compare that to where Ronaldo is right now and the likes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, but we've got to understand, this is a guy who's had a lot of injuries, mm-hmm. Gareth Bale. You know, whether he goes on to that length of, of time remains to be seen, but it seems at this point unlikely. Um, but but uh, look, I, I think he did come back for fitness purposes. I just wonder now, if, if you're Daniel Levy, what sort of decision you make because there is a possibility that you get him on loan for the final year of his contract next season. Um, 230 grand a week, though. If you're Daniel Levy, do you take that risk? He's, he is improving, but do you take the risk that that will continue or end up with Gareth Bale on loan, maybe injured next season on 230 grand a week? I don't take him next year. If I'm Daniel Levy, I don't take him. That Them wages can go on maybe two or three good players. You, yeah, know? you can't take that risk so with you, a player exactly. that we're talking about improving. Exactly, and... He's, he's playing under a manager who plays defensively, you know. If he was playing under, a, if he was maybe playing in the Pochettino side, we might be seeing a different Gareth Bale. You just never know, you know. Um, but if I am Daniel Levy, looking at it from a business point of view and looking at the depth of my squad, I'm taking that 220 grand and I'm buying two or three very good players. The same, you wouldn't have him? No, I mean, I would have a Gareth Bale in top form. You know, obviously any club would, but not in this reality. If Real Madrid were on the phone right now and they said, look, clubs are calling us about Gareth next season, we're going to give you first refusal. Like if we could have him at Man United, would I take him? Is that kind of what you're insinuating? No, no, I'm saying if you're Tottenham Hotspur, if you're Daniel Levy, do you you take this deal again for another season, the one that you've, you've had? No, I don't think so, because I think if he'd played and they'd got the best out of him and he has played and brought something to them, then yeah, but it's too much money to spend on a player that kind of plays one game, then goes on the bench the next game, because that must be a conversation they're having, because he has been on, he was on a decent run and then he got benched the next game. Surely a manager having a conversation with a player saying, can you play in this next game or not? Because it's Gareth Bale. No disrespect to the other players like Bergwijn, Lucas Moura, brilliant players. But for me, a fit Gareth Bale can take Tottenham to another level. Yes, Harry Kane's the main player, but I think Tottenham fans brought Harry um, Gareth Bale in to be that player that he used to be. It's like a romance story. It's like if Cristiano Ronaldo came back to Man United. If Cristiano Ronaldo came back to Manchester United and the situation happened like what's happened with Bale, I'd be so disappointed from a Man United perspective because you want your hero. You want him to like play the way he used to play and he still is only 31. I heard so much hope in your voice. I know, I know. So So Cristiano's listening. (laughs) I heard so much hope.